I'm Norman Varney with AV Room Service. Today we're going to be talking about room mode solutions. In the last segment, we talked about room modes, the problems, and, and um, how room modes are um, nonlinear frequency responses in the base region. We're talking about frequencies below 300, so they're long ways, many feet, even yards long, um, and how it makes a, a droning, muddy, inarticulate um, uh, sound quality about the, uh, um, the, your stereo system in, in your room. Um, so what, what a room mode is, is if you think of your loudspeaker as it's a piston, it's pushing air particles um, in the room. So when it is playing low frequencies, it is pushing these air particles down the room and uh, running into a boundary, a length, width, or, or height boundary of the, the room. In other words, it's a contained environment. So it, it hits that boundary and then reflects back. And as it's coming back, it is running into the continuous, the incoming signal that is still going out um, back and forth from your, your loudspeaker. And um, when conditions are just right, it creates an in-phase condition of uh, force and velocity, um, and that's cr that creates a standing wave. The standing waves or frequencies that occur in your room are dictated by the dimensions of your room, and they then are excited. They uh, um, uh, occur when you play music and frequencies that are sympathetic with those dimensions, those wavelengths. So this is uh, similar to a graph that I showed in the, the previous segment but uh, slightly changed and it's it's showing you the difference between wave acoustics which is what we're talking about with room modes versus ray acoustics where the mid-range and high frequencies the the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of of reflection with wave acoustics we're talking about constructive and deconstructive uh, interferences that can occur in the in the room um, with the with standing waves that can be as significant as a difference between a, a high and low pressure peak of 25 to 30 dB. In this chart, we see a simple uh, fundamental second harmonic and third harmonic mode. Now we would have these for and on and on multiples of of them. We would have them also for each of the three axes. Especially problematic is if we've got a room that has an evenly divisible dimension. For example, an eight foot ceiling and a 16 foot length. Then we're gonna have similar modes, similar frequencies stacking upon themselves and, and exasperating the problem even more. So room dimensions are one way we can uh, control room modes. Having uh, um, dimensions that uh, evenly distribute the room modes um, are a huge benefit. Construction materials and methods is another way we can control um, room modes. So uh, in our lab, we have um, isolated walls and ceiling and, and floor. They're um, resiliently mounted and there's constrained layer damping and, and so forth. Um, so it allows the, the boundary to actually flex and absorb the, the low frequency energy. Listener speaker locations are another way that we can control and, and anybody can um, take advantage of this. So in this chart, we see just giving the, the axial first uh, three modes, we can see that if we, and, and this is, you know, length and feet, and we can see now where the room modes live. And it's just math. If we uh, put the loudspeaker, like many people do in, uh, um, in say a corner, <laughs> and this is just showing one axial, you'll see how the high pressure points for 
those three and as a matter of fact all of the room modes are going to be living in in that corner so if we put a loudspeaker in there we are going to be pushing we're going to be exciting all of the room modes um, so not a good place to for either a listener to be against a boundary or a, a loudspeaker to be against a boundary this is why you want yourself, <laughs> uh, other listeners, and the speakers to be out in the room more. And so ideally, we want to have that loudspeaker, oh, the loudspeaker's over here. <laughs> we want to have the loudspeaker out away from where it can excite or exasperate the room modes. So listener, speaker, optimum listening speaker positions in the particular room can be calculated because uh, again it's just math and then of course it can be um, tested on site um, either by ear or with instruments just to verify or, or to confirm um, and then a fourth way we can control room modes is with interior acoustic treatments so add-on acoustic treatments my company makes uh, a couple of different types and I'm not here to promote those but we do need to talk about how what type of acoustic treatments interior acoustic treatments are beneficial uh, we talked about for reverberation of mids and highs resistive like fiberglass uh, things like that um, with the low frequencies and, and that was velocity particle velocity where we want to address it and here we're talking about um, uh, particle um, pressure and so it's a different area it's a different location in the room where we need to put a different type of treatment and so diaphragmatic passive acoustic treatment diaphragmatic uh, absorption is the way to go and the place to locate them is where the modes live their high pressure points live on the boundary so that's an that's easy enough for us to to deal with um, so corners are are as we've already discussed a place where all the modes will congregate so that's the first place where I would put them and then also the the uh, first fundamental or first harmonic is going to be right at the midsection of uh, each of the boundaries and uh, so that's also a good place to, to treat and then beyond that then you have to kind of calculate and, and find out where the other modes live because they're not so simple those are are obvious and and also the most energetic and so the most beneficial to to treat in uh, on our acoustics lab you can see here the front wall behind the what i call the front wall behind the speakers you can see up high that i've got some a treat some acoustic treatment for low frequency for for room modes and you can see there's kind of a belt so it you know it goes like this and across and there's the same thing in the back the same thing on the the sides addressing those first and, and second harmonic um, modes and then in the corners too now this is the what we call the frequency response panel system the frp system we make several different panels that address mids and highs and low frequencies with diaphragmatic absorbers. Um, different panels to address different bands of low frequencies. And then we stretch fabric over it, acoustic, acoustically transparent fabric, um, so it's concealed and you don't see it at all. And photos of both the FRP system and also the Me Too, which also has corner traps and diaphragmatic absorbers in there and wall panels that uh, are wooden and stand out and do a job of low frequency and mids and high frequency simultaneously and just hang like a, a, a painting. Um, all of these panels have been tested in an acoustics lab so we know the noise reduction coefficients uh, across the the bandwidths and know how to then appropriate the the right amount at the right location in the right quantity so we do that with the um, modeling and then on-site testing um, and then the results are uh, again talking about low frequencies in this uh, in this video um, the results are much more uh, much better articulation better articulation as far as remember this is a this test is a uh, a gated sweep 
a sixteenth of a second on and a sixteenth of a second off, and it, so it sounds like it goes do 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 do. And in the blue graph after our FRP system, you can see that. You can obviously hear it too. And the red before our treatment, it, it slurs. It do 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 do. Very inarticulate. Also to be considered is room modes need containment in order to, to work. It's a resonance. Uh, so it needs these boundaries. Um, if you've got a large window or a door opening, uh, pass through or anything like that, it's going to help relieve the room modes. In other words, they'll have an escape route and they won't be able to reflect and build up and cause a, a, a standing wave. Um, that can be an advantage. It can also be a disadvantage if that it, it means that your, your hi-fi is going to have to uh, be more powerful um, to fill the space, but it also means that you won't have the typical room mode buildup, at least at, at one particular axis. Hope you got some uh, good information out of that, and we'll see you in another segment of Guarding Acoustics. Thanks.